George had always inspired teachers, students, and parents to feel they were part of a big family. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. My name is Ernest Avalar. Dr. George Weeks, principal of Tennyson High School in Hayward, offered me a position teaching English there for the 1959-1960 school year. Since my main teaching fields were French and Latin, he promised that I would be able to teach those subjects at the being built Mount Eden High School, of which he was going to be principal. I didn't know him previously to being interviewed, but I was very impressed with him. He was well known in the community as a person deeply interested in students and treated everyone equally. He had only been in Hayward for a few years, but he had made his mark in the community. He had an excellent background to be principal because he had been a teacher, a dean, a coach, and a superintendent before coming to Hayward. He kept his promise, and when Mount Eden opened in August of 1960, he took a nucleus of about 20 teachers from Tennyson to be the founding faculty in Mount Eden. Everyone wanted to go with him, but only 20 of us were lucky enough to be chosen. He selected people who had the family spirit, which the French call esprit de famille, which was the keynote of his educational philosophy. Dr. Weeks was an excellent leader, not only encouraging the academically inclined, but also those interested in the trades, sports, and other activities. His untimely death in an automobile accident on the San Mateo Bridge in his second year of leading Mount Eden was a great blow. The student body was an excellent mixture of college prep and vocational students. In the early years, the esprit de famille existed also in the district administration. The family spirit did persist at Mount Eden, even after Dr. Weeks' passing for some years. The faculty and students were inspired to do their best. We had an outstanding professional faculty. In those days, men teachers wore a coat and tie, ladies proper dresses. Over the years, everything became more relaxed. One day, about 1970, a lady teacher entered the faculty room and in a very dramatic way, because she was a drama teacher, made a shocking announcement that she was going to wear a pants suit the next day. And she challenged the administration to say anything against her doing it, and they did not. Some of the faculty were what could be called characters. One, Vicky Alvarado, would regale us in the faculty room with interesting tidbits about a relative Juan Batista Alvarado, governor of California in the 1830s. She also, at a drop of a hat, would recite poetry from the Renaissance period. In fact, there were so many outstanding teachers, far too numerous to mention, in each of the departments. However, in later years, the school population changed, and by 1991, the end of my tenure there, fewer students were going to college. That resulted in Latin being dropped and my French classes decreased so that I had to teach some English. Most students took foreign languages to qualify to enter the university, but some or many of them loved the languages for themselves, which gave me great pleasure. One of my best Latin students, David Jones, made good use of it in working in his doctorate in anthropology and his abstracts he published on his Roman era diggings on the River Thames. He is the author of several books on early Latin America. Another outstanding student, Leslie Kearns Freitas, could not take Latin because it had been dropped. She took up a petition to reinstate it. Leslie is known as the lady who won one of the largest amounts on Jeopardy, and she credits her knowledge of Latin as a big help. She is now a professor of Spanish at Cal State East Bay. Right from the first graduating class of 1962, we had great students like Catholic Truex, the first Mount Eden student to attend Stanford, majoring in Japanese and went to work at the Pentagon after graduation from Stanford. 
In the ensuing years, there were other outstanding students. For example, brother and sister Shelley and Alan Wong, who both attended Johns Hopkins and both became medical doctors. Rennie Yoshida, who attended Radcliffe and became one of the first women to attend Harvard Law School. My greatest pleasure was to interact with them all as faculty advisor for the local honor society, the California Scholarship Federation. Tears would come to my eyes as I saw them march in the graduation procession with their distinctive golden cords. Perhaps in the next 50 years, Mount Eden will regain its luster and esprit de famille so dear to the heart of its founder, Dr. Weeks.